Ultras and Supers are the highest rarity pedals in the game, and they are very difficult to obtain. With the crack chances being only 2-2.4% for Ultra and 1-1.2% for Super, it can take a while to progress into the late game for many players. However, knowing what farming methods are the most effective will make it significantly easier, and this video will explain those methods and when they should be used. The first method is Antel farming. Fire Antel and Termite Hell have very good Mythic mob spawn rates, making them some of the best places to grind. Let's go over Fire Antel first, as it is the more popular one for a good reason. In this part of Fire Antel, you will find mostly Mythic Soldier Ants. This is also the spawn location of Ultra and Super Queen Fire Ant. Higher up, you'll find Worker and Baby Fire Ants as well, but you'll find more Legendary mobs and fewer Mythics. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of farming Fire Antel. The Mythic spawn rates in this area are very high, so you can save up a lot of Legendary and Mythic Wings and Yucca to craft into Ultras. Wings are useful in many situations as they deal a good amount of damage and have good range, allowing you to stay at a safe distance. Yucca is a consistent healing pedal that is very effective in tank builds. Queen Fire Ants have three possible Ultra Drops, and these drops are pretty useful. As stated previously, Wings are a good damage pedal with a very good range. Eggs are great for both damage and defense against swarms of mythic mobs, and they will be very important for some of the farming methods that will be mentioned later in this video. And Basil increases the effect of healing pedals, so it is great when paired with all the yucca that you're getting from the mythic mobs. Both Fire Ant and Termite Hell are also AFKable. You'll find a lot of players stacked on top of each other with a combination of Jelly and Damage Petals, and this method of farming is almost as efficient as active farming as long as you can deal enough damage to get loot. Which brings us to the downsides of Ant Hell farming. Fire Ant Hell is often extremely overcrowded, making it difficult for anyone who doesn't already have Ultras to actually get loot. Remember those stacks mentioned earlier? If you don't have any Ultra Petals, the stack will likely kill most of the mobs before you can deal enough damage. This problem becomes even worse when there are players using Ultra Eggs and Sticks, since the summoned mobs push everything away from the stack and basically solo everything without giving other players a chance to get loot. However, you can get around this issue if you play when there are fewer players active. It won't be as efficient as stack farming all day, but it's still probably your best option if you're a newer player. In Termite Hell, this area has the highest rarity mobs. Similar to Fire Ant Hell, it contains mostly mythic soldiers with a few worker termites and baby termites as well. There's also the Termite Overmine, which has the most health out of any mob in the game. The most and arguably only useful ultra pedal from this place is Bone, which can repeatedly hit mobs with low body damage, making it powerful against all legendary mobs and some mythic mobs. The other pedals from this area aren't that useful though. Carrot is incredibly lacking in just about every pedal stat, and its only real purpose is bubble farming. Plank and Relic are some of the most useless pedals in the game, and Tomato is pretty mediocre. Termite Hell is also often less crowded than Fire Ant Hill, but it comes at the cost of lower survivability. The psionic connection between the termites prevents you from killing one at a time, so if you get swarmed, you can't just clear a path and escape that way. You have to clear out the entire swarm, and in most cases, you will be destroyed by the termites before you can clear all of them out. Generally, you shouldn't farm this area until you already have a decent amount of ultras. Next, we have Maze and Jungle. Similarly to Ant Hell, the main purpose here is to save up a lot of Legendary and Mythic Petals and then craft them into Ultras. Both of these areas have insanely high Mythic spawn rates and a variety of good drops. Centralia Maze contains every Garden mob except for Dandelion, with Hornet being the most common spawn. Good petals that you can get here include Stinger, Missile, Antenna, Faster, Third Eye, Light, Rose, Leaf, and Rock. In Jungle 5, you can get Missile, Antenna, Bloodstinger, Burr, Leaf, and some other less important petals. The main problem with both of these zones is that they are incredibly dangerous. 
If you want to farm them safely and efficiently, your best options are either to play with a good squad or to use an Ultra Egg build. You also have to be active for this to be efficient. AFK farming does not work well here. Antel farming sets you up for maze grinding very well since Ultra Wings will be very useful here and Ultra Eggs will allow you to survive on your own if you can't find a good squad. The third way to obtain Ultras is cycling. This is a strategy where you kill an Ultra Mob, switch servers, then kill that Ultra Mob again in another server. Cycling allows you to farm specific petals that aren't reliably obtainable through Antel, Maze, or Jungle. However, it is incredibly boring and inefficient, and impossible to do AFK. Then there's Super Hunting, which is mostly a way for people who already have Ultras to get even more Ultras or Supers, since it is nearly impossible for Mythic players to get loot from Super Mobs. This is the most efficient way to get Ultras, assuming you can consistently get loot from the Super Mobs. Generally, to use this method, you need a good DPS build and bubble build, and you should join a Discord server that notifies members when a Super spawns, like Supercord. You can do this method without spending too much active time. The super fights can't be done AFK, but while you're waiting for one to spawn, you can go do something else and come back when you get a notification from a pinging server. The obvious downside to this method is that you need to have good DPS and a good bubble build to be able to hunt supers and actually get loot. Also, this method is very effective for getting ultras in general, but if you want a specific pedal, this might not be your best option, since only a few supers will drop that pedal. And finally, we have Ocean Grinding. I'm putting Jellyfish Fields, Crab Kingdom, and Starfish Farming together, since they share some common characteristics. In all of these zones, you'll find a decent amount of Legendary and Mythic mobs, as well as each zone's Ultra and Super mobs. Jellyfish Fields tends to have more Mythics, while the other two zones have a lot more Legendary mobs. Ocean Grinding is good because the Ocean Biome has a variety of useful pedals, including Claw, which can deal massive damage to Super Mobs and instantly wipe out low rarity swarms, Sand, which is one of the best DPS pedals, Bubble, which makes getting around the map significantly faster, Jelly, which is essential for AFK farming, and more. But that's where the good part ends. The mob density in the ocean isn't very high compared to places like Antel and Maze. Many of the mobs that do spawn are only legendary, making the save and craft method pretty slow. The drop rates also tend to be bad compared to most other mobs. If you have the time though, ocean grinding is certainly worth it. Throughout this video, I have explained the best methods of grinding for ultras and supers, but in order to use these methods effectively, you need to have a good build. Otherwise, you'll either die constantly or just not deal enough damage to get loot. If you have trouble figuring out what pedals to use, you should watch my guide on pedals and builds, which is linked on the end screen right now. There's also a video explaining the cycle method mentioned in this video, so make sure to watch that if you don't know how cycling works.